How's everyone doing today? Uh, my name is Tony Shaw. I'm the bar manager for Nicholson's uh, downtown Cincinnati. Uh, today we're going to be talking about cask conditioned beer. Um, the difference between cask conditioned beer and keg conditioned beer, uh, there are a few uh, distinct qualities uh, that, that make it different. Uh, one, obviously the barrel is going to be a little different. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, one of the major points is uh, there is not as much fizz or CO2 uh, in cask conditioned beer compared to regular uh, keg conditioned beer. Uh, there is uh, CO2 that naturally occurs uh, due to the fer uh, secondary fermentation process uh, that occurs uh, when, you're, uh, when you tap the uh, cask conditioned beer. So if you look at uh, standard beer, uh, right here on the faucet, we use CO2 to push it through. Well, on our cask condition, we've got hand pumps that pump the beer out. And I'll show you about that here in a little bit. Uh, another uh, uh, differentiation between cask conditioned beer uh, to K conditioned beer is we serve it uh, at a higher temperature in between 40 and 50 degrees, which is uh, 10 to 15 degrees warmer uh, than uh, traditional beer. Uh, so if you look at the uh, lack of CO2 compared to uh, regular beer, and the higher temperature, uh, those uh, help uh, with a better mouthfeel uh, with the beer. Uh, lower CO2 means less fizz, uh, and then the higher temperature uh, lets you uh, enjoy some of the different nuances that you get uh, in the beer. Uh, the more CO2 you add and the colder a beer is, uh, the more it anesthetizes the smell and the, uh, and the taste. Okay? All right, so if you look at this, this is what we call a firkin or a cask conditioned beer. And right here, uh, this is where the beer comes out. So this is where we send the, uh, the siphon through and then a hose comes out. On the reverse side right here, we've got the hole where the uh, air, air nozzle is going to go through. So as soon as we uh, tap the keg, we're going to go ahead and uh, enter in the air nozzle, and then we're going to put it down horizontal. Okay. So if you want to see, we have one hooked up right over here. So as you can see, right here is where the uh, air nozzle goes in, and then down below is where the uh, beer comes out. So when you would go to pour one of our cast condition beers, you got the hand pump, just like that. So what this is doing is it's forcing air into uh, the uh, firkin right here. It's forcing air in, and the beer comes out right out through here. And so that's what we do. We'll go ahead and pour that, and there you go. Uh, interesting fact about cast condition beer: it's uh, very unique. Um, the actual brewing process um, uh, starts out at the uh, at the actual brewery, uh, but then it goes through a secondary fermentation process here. Um, as soon as you tap this keg, you've got about a two to three week shelf life. Uh, the reason behind that is because it has active yeast. So this active yeast is uh, turning the source of minimal sugars into alcohol and CO2. Uh, once those sugars are gone and the yeast has nothing else to eat, they decompose and they die, turning the beer sour. Um, so some people generally don't uh, use cask kitchen beer because they might not sell a lot of it and then after those two to three weeks you maybe have half the firkin left and that beer has gone bad. Um, luckily uh, with our history and tradition uh, and then our reputation uh, we have never really uh, had that problem going through our cask condition beer. Um, it's fairly unique as well because you've got these firkins that are different than standard, uh, standard kegs. When you take it back to the brewery they have to filter it out because you've got that yeast and bacteria and everything like that uh, that is laying at the bottom after the keg has been uh, empty. So they have to rinse it out, refill it, uh, send it back out. Um, since there are not a lot of uh, bars and restaurants in the United States carrying cask conditioned beer, there aren't many of these uh, firkins uh, floating around. So it's just very, very tough to get, uh, get your hands on some. And again, uh, with our reputation and the way we uh, sell our cask conditioned beer, cask conditioned beer and uh, how fast we go through it, uh, we usually get the uh, pick of the litter when uh, new cask conditioned beers come in. Um, we're also fortunate that we have two hand pumps running uh, simultaneously, so we have two options for our guests. Um, you know, if you go into any other bar, they'll probably just have one, if not any. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about uh, Nicholson's and our cask kitchen beer. Um, yeah, so whenever you have a chance, stop on down. We usually have uh, two rotating, uh, very very unique. You might run into the classic uh, American, or excuse me, classic uh, English. Uh, you know, uh, cask conditions. They're more session beers, the lower lower in alcohol content. Uh, but we also have stuff that uh, we've got the American craft brewers uh, making. They tend to be a little higher in alcohol content, a lot more flavor, uh, a lot more hops. So, yeah. so if you have a chance, stop on down.